Hey everybody, greetings from Portland, Oregon. Hey. It's the end of the summer and I have finished hiking the Pacific Crest Trail. Yay, ski! <laughs> Yay for me, like little yeah, toddlers. Yeah, that's huge. That, no, it's not like little toddlers. No, the no. clapping is like oh, little yeah. toddlers. Yeah, yeah, but like finishing the PC tree, PCT means 2,650 miles. 52. 52 miles. Not that we're counting. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of dang miles for this old grizzle to hike, so pretty so, awesome. So I'm back. Yay, I'm glad for that too. Yeah, <laughs> minus about 30-ish pounds that I mm -hmm. dropped over the course of the summer. Looking sexy. Mm -hmm -hmm. And now we're getting ready to head out on the next leg of our adventure, but we wanted to kind of catch you up on what was happening over the course of the summer. So this summer I got some new house batteries. Um, you can read about that over on our blog. It's already posted, so um, we'll put a link here if you want to read about that. And then we're going to be heading east to visit one more child. We've seen four of our five children. We're going to be heading east towards Idaho to see one more before she and her husband and our grandson move to Anchorage. So one more hug before they move to the, to the way north. And then we're going to go towards Mount Rushmore, uh, along around Wyoming, Dakotas, down a little bit into the Chicago land, see my sister, up a little bit into the Detroit land. Oh, <laughs> so to Detroit, maybe go up into Ontario if it's open. And then down again into the Carolinas. We are going to try to beat the snow. So we'll see how much of our northern trek we actually do. It's um, first day of fall today, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, this kind of brings you into the story. So like Noelle said, like our plan is we're going east. We don't have, we have one, the one commitment in Idaho with our daughter. After that, our schedule is wide open. So we kind of thought we were kicking around the idea, what if we meet up with Some you? of you. So, leave hmm. a comment, shoot us an email. Certainly don't promise we could meet everyone. Not that everyone would really want to meet us either. <laughs> please, somebody, one person, please. We just need one, just one. Just to validate Validation. Us. <laughs> We're such nerds. Oh my God, nobody wants to see us. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to hang out for like a night. Uh, Get a beer. Soda. Swap some stories, soda, swap some stories. We're game for boondocking. We're game to sleep in your driveway if Cupcake would fit in your driveway. Careful there. Uh, it's bigger than, she's bigger than she looks. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That was just perfect. I yeah, I know. You even looked at me I like, know. how can I not say yeah, it? So okay. easy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so if you want to try to, to hang out with us for an evening or so, Send us, a, drop us a line, you know, get in touch, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. Certainly, our schedule being wide open, we have a fair amount of flexibility. Uh, so we're not just going to go east once we get far, far east. Uh, fart. Fart. Once I do want to go to Fargo. How do you say it? How do you say it like North Dakota? I don't know. Fargo? I don't know how you say it. Uh, you're on your own. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, I want to go there because of the movie. Yeah. So once we hit <laughs> however far east we're going to go, at that point we're going to turn south. We're going to come down the, the coast. Noelle's itching to go to North Carolina. Yeah, since I was a kid. So once we come through the south, uh, we're probably going to head into the Midwest. I'll probably visit my parents in Colorado sometime in December. And then around the holidays, uh, we'll actually fly back to Portland, spend some time with uh, the kids and grandkids here. So we've got flexibility. You've got the desire, we've got the diesel. So, <laughs> I don't know. That sounds a little creepy. <laughs> Is that more creepy than you trying to say Fargo? No, that was bad. Yeah, that, yeah. that wasn't creepy. That was just That was odd. just, yeah. I'm not special. You're very special. <laughs> so, speaking of special, you guys are special. Oh, We've yeah. now hit over 1,100 subscribers. So 1,111 to be exact. Whew. So thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for, for watching subscribing. and subscribing. Yeah, your comments. And caring yeah. about us. Like, that's weird. 
if you have yeah if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do it now uh just click on the subscribe button and then every week you'll get a notification that we have out a brand new video so uh that would be really great i saw someone had made a comment a few weeks ago you guys are not like some of the other youtubers with all that patreon stuff <laughs> well truthfully we are just like those other guys, well, except we're not really except good at promoting really... it. <laughs> <laughs> Patron patronizes us. <laughs> we have four patrons, and we are thankful for all four of them. And we're looking for number five. It could be you. Lucky you. So. <laughs> or lucky us. Lucky us. Yes. So we've got all kinds of wonderful content over there that we only have on our Patreon channel. We have a lot of videos from this summer that are never going to see the light of day to the general public. Uh, just because it's Patreon only content. So do us a solid, head on over there, check us out. The link is in our bio. So without further ado. Thank you. Thank you. We've rambled enough. Yeah. So now I'm gonna talk about our, my the regularly scheduled video for today. So come on out to the truck camper with me and we'll talk about that. Today I want to chat a little bit about being a female and solo traveling, whether that's in my truck camper this year or um, in 2019 in a van, camper van that I bought. So between these two summers, I have about six months of solo camping. And I just wanted to share a little bit about my experience and how I stay safe. So the first thing that I always do when I get to a new location is let someone know where I'm at. That's either Steve by um, Garmin Text if he's out hiking, or I let our oldest daughter know where I'm at, general idea. One thing that's cool about our Garmin, we have the Garmin inReach, is that when I send a message, it will share my location automatically. So I don't have to know exactly where I am other than I'm in the Alabama Hills and it will still share my exact GPS coordinates with my daughter or with Steve or, or one of my sisters. So that is important to me. But by the same token, one thing I don't do is I don't share on social media where I am. So that means if I'm gonna leave a camping um, review on a boondocking site like Camp Indiam or on iOverlander, those are the two that I use the most, um, then I don't leave that review while I'm there. I leave it the morning that I'm driving away. So I'll sit there um, the morning that I'm leaving, make my review, throw in my pictures. Maybe I'll put a Facebook update once in a while, Instagram, though I'm not very good at that kind of social media. I should be a little bit better about um, shooting some pictures over to Insta once in a while. So I guess that's the important first thing I do is let someone know where I am, but don't let strangers necessarily know where I am. So I also just touched on it a little, but um, we use Garmin inReach. It's a GPS tracking locator emergency device. It has on top of it a emergency beacon. I can hit an SOS and um, someone will text me back right away and ask what the issue is. So Steve and I have actually talked about it that <laughs> if I were to be in the back of the camper sleeping and someone were to hop into the truck and um, do whatever they do to make it start um, and start to drive off with me, then I would simply hit my SOS beacon and be in touch, or if I have service, obviously, 911. But, you know, that's probably never, ever, ever gonna happen in real life. But part of keeping safe is to make a plan in case something were to happen, so that in the situation, I don't panic and I, I, follow, I follow my own script. So having a Garmin or a GPS device of some type is a definite necessity, I think, if you're a solo female camper. I think maybe even if you're a solo guy, that's probably a good idea to have. So um, just letting somebody know where I am is pretty important. 
Another thing that I do to keep safe um, while I'm solo camping is to switch my location every probably third day at the most. I don't generally stay in one location more than th three days. Um, just like if I were at home, I don't really want somebody to know every bit of my schedule. I don't really want them to learn my patterns. I don't really want them to... Um, be that familiar with my habits so by switching locations and um you know i can just i can stay a little bit more anonymous and in the background maybe a little bit bit less likely that someone's going to realize i'm out in the middle of nowhere by myself another thing that i do to um stay safe is that I'm really careful about what site I pull into. If I'm boondocking, then I am going to choose a spot that's pretty wide open. I would not back into a spot that has only one way to get back out because I don't want someone parking in front of me and blocking me. So I would choose a space to back into or even to pull through that has plenty of ways for me to move easily. I either want to back up, I want to go forward, I want to cut my wheel to the left, cut my wheel to the right, whatever. I just want to give myself lots of opportunity to easily and quickly leave an area. You know, in the truck camper, it's not as easy to leave if I were to have an issue, which I've not had, so you know, knock on wood. Um, but in the van, I could just hop out of bed in the back or sitting at the dining table, or whatever, and I could just walk to the front of the van and drive away. It's not quite the same in the truck. In the truck, I would need to potentially go outside into a dangerous situation, whatever it is that's making me feel nervous and wanting to drive away. So even though I keep... Um, bear canister, bear sprays in here, um, and mace in here, I still would potentially have to hop out of the camper and run around to the front of the truck. So it's not quite as easy to just drive away, but I still leave myself that opportunity by parking in a way that I can easily move in the night if I needed to. I'm just amusing myself by moving around the camper as I film this. I don't know why. Just amusing myself <laughs> anyway. So another thing I do when I'm parking is I'm checking my area for rocks and trees. In 2019, a tree randomly fell on the path onto a hiker and unfortunately he lost his life. Um, even though I didn't meet that hiker, I'm still very much aware when I'm hiking, especially by myself or when I'm camping, that I'm not parking underneath trees that are, you know, likely going to fall or dead. Or I'm not parking under a place that's really rocky. So that's just another thing that I do as I'm parking to ensure a little bit more safety. Um, I guess along the same lines, first thing that I do when I do park is I get out and I listen to all of my tires. Um, Steve last summer had a tire pop on him while he was in the middle of Booney somewhere, I think in Texas. So I am careful and thankfully for him, he heard it as soon as he parked and he was able to make the repair. So that's one thing I do right away now when I'm parking is walk around and listen to the tires and make sure nothing's like whooshing air so that, um, if I need to, I can fix it right away and I don't wake up the next day to a flat tire. So for me, solo female truck camping means that I'm going to hike, or sorry, I'm going to camp with neighbors whenever I possibly can. Now, I don't mean I'm going to get right up next to somebody when we're boondocking. I don't do that. And I don't really love it when other people do it. Um, I've had vans pull in right next to me um, late at night and they're gone the next morning so I get that you know sometimes it's dark and people just need a safe place to stay for the night that's okay um, but I try not to get super close to people but I am always aware of where other um, campers or RVs are parked so that I can be sort of close in case I need um, 
need a hand. So being aware of my neighbors, you know, I could also go the other way. This summer I parked in, or I camped in, um, what's it called? Tuolumne Meadows Campground. That's in Yellow, not Yellowstone, Yosemite National Park in California. I did not love it by myself. Um, oh, it was weird, you know, like families are out there making s'mores and doing family stuff. And then, oh, here I am all by myself. I didn't know if it felt more like a loser or um, worried if people would think I'm some kind of weird creeper or, or what, but I didn't necessarily love that. However, I stayed in more like forest campgrounds that I really did love. Red's Meadow was great. That's near Mammoth Lakes. Um, Onion Valley Campground, which is up near Kearsarge Pass. Excellent campground and a little bit more spread out. You're not like right next door to your neighbors as you are in a national park campground. So I loved those. In fact, in Red's Meadow, I even um, went into their hot springs quite a few times by myself and that was fun. So well, probably at least once a day while I was there. So that was nice. So um, I'm always aware of my neighbors, like going over to meet them, say hello, just so that they know I'm there and that I could rely on them um, if I needed to. So I guess for me, the biggest tip I have about being a solo camper is just don't worry about it and have fun. Like I hike pretty much daily. I sit outside in the sunshine or the shade, depending, and read a book. I probably read, I don't know, 12 or 15 books this past summer. I've hiked, I don't know, 100 or so miles, which, you know, like compared to Steve, that's nothing, right? But for me, that's quite a bit. I've met lots of hikers. I love sitting out at camp, um, at the campground at night, chatting with other hikers. So for me, I love staying at trailheads. That's probably my favorite place to stay. I feel safe with the hikers coming and going, and usually someone will be willing to share stories with me, you know, at night as we sip a beer or a water or something. So I say go out there, enjoy being a solo camper, and have a great time. But just be aware of your surroundings so that you're safe. Hope these tips helped, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.